Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, uh, now we will proceed with lecture 5 that is real estate economics. We will be discussing topics related to uh, real estate e economics, there uh, are certain aspects of economics which impact real estate. We have discussed um, some basics about that, so we will uh, deeply uh, understand this area. So moving on. First, the table of content for the session. Uh, so, in this particular session, we will be covering uh, topics such as basic economics, um, we will be going to uh, the marketplace that is uh, the real estate marketplace, then we will also be talking about rental space and employment level, we will be talking about impact of interest rates on real estate, then business cycles, so there are different um, upheavals and uh, down times in economy, so that will be discussed in this. Then uh, what are the economic implications of uh, all this? Then there is uh, something which we have discussed uh, in a, on a very basic term that is the government influence. Uh, there are various ways, ways in uh, government influences real estate, so that will also be discussed here. And then the uh, different phases of economy which ranges from depression, recovery, uh, prosperity to uh, uh, to recovery. So basically that is how we will be uh, also looking at uh, the economy um, through that lens. And then we will also be discussing uh, real estate market dynamics, impact of industry, population changes, supply and demand in real estate. So uh, and then environmental regulations, real estate cycle and economic factors. So all this uh, will uh, which have a great impact on the real estate market, they will be uh, discussed in this particular session. So moving on to uh, revision of what we have done till now. So in last class we have uh, seen that what are the different type of managerial positions which are required in real estate, um, various type of real estate managers are there, um, we discussed what are the types of managers are there, what are their duties. So uh, also like we discussed that depending on what type of real estate we are talking about. These uh, aspects of duties may change, they may vary, there may be different type of tax, in some companies use uh, different type of tax, but we had a general discussion, what are the roles and responsibility of different type of real estate managers are and what are the expectations from them. And uh, if somebody uh, is looking for a future uh, to make their career in this particular area, what are the skills and, uh, and the work they will have to uh, like uh, become expert in. So all this was part of that particular uh, lecture. Now like I said we will be uh, focusing on real estate and economics. So, so understanding the relationship between real estate and economics is fundamental for effective property management. So let us delve into some key points regarding the intersection. So value preservation and enhancement. So the primary objective of real estate manager is both to increase and preserve the value of the property they oversee. Now by implementing strategic initiatives and prudent management practice, they aim to enhance property value over time. Then coming to the economic impact of economic trends. Now economic trends exert a significant influence on the operations and performance of the properties. So we understand that property managers, they will have to deal with different situations and one of them is of course the economic conditions. So economic trends is something uh, which can influence the operations, they can influence the performance of the properties. So factors such as interest rate, inflation, um, employment level and consumer confidence directly affect property markets, rental demand and property values. So there are certain situations which will be there in the economy overall. and. Uh, because of these situations, 
Sometimes the market will boom. Sometimes there will be situations when, when market, uh, the economy, overall economy is not doing that well. Then in that case, in such difficult times, there can be, um, let's say, for example, a mall is there. So the footfall might be low. So uh, the overall stress on the uh, business of that mall will impact uh, the day-to-day -day functioning of a mall. So how will a real estate manager uh, deal with that? So, uh, and there can be situations when the market is booming and uh, there is a lot of uh, um, uh, potential buyers who are visiting your mall. Then in that case, what will the uh, real estate manager do? So there can be different aspects of economy which may impact business, but uh, um, their impact is something which is always cyclical and uh, sometimes we see boom and sometimes we see situations where which are difficult. So uh, a real estate manager will of course have to handle all the situations. Then essential understanding of economics. So a real estate manager must have a basic understanding of economics to grasp the implication of economic trends on property performance. Familiarity with economic principle enable managers to anticipate market shifts, make informed investment decisions and implement efficient property management strategies. So in essence, the nexus between the real estate and economics, economics underscores the importance of economic literacy in property management. Real estate managers must stay attuned to economic indicators and a trend to navigate market dynamics successfully and achieve optimal outcomes for the properties under, the, under their stewardship. So this area is very important for future potential real estate managers to understand. Then coming to basic economics. So, uh, so basic understanding of economics. So economic fundamentals. So economic is a broad field that delve into how societies allocate resources to meet human needs. It involves understanding production processes, distribution networks and consumption patterns. By studying economics, we gain insights into how market function and how policies impact economic outcomes. Importance of real estate in economics. Real estate, including both land and structures, serve as fundamental component of economic activity. It provides the physical space for businesses to operate individuals to reside, and infrastructure to function. Changes in real estate markets can have far-reaching effects on employment levels, investment flows, and overall economic health. Role of money. Then money acts as a medium of exchange, facilitating transactions and enabling economic activity. Its value is not, uh, its value is not fixed and can fluctuate due to factors such as inflation, interest rate and monetary policy. Understanding the dynamics of money is crucial for businesses, policy makers and indi individuals navigating the economic landscape. So understanding of basic economics is also something which we require to function as a property uh, real estate manager. Then moving on to the marketplace. So, Markets serve as a platform for the exchange of goods and services where willing sellers and buyers interact. Within the marketplace, various factors influence transactions and outcomes. Certain fundamental elements of this marketplace. So we have price, we have supply, we have demand and the, these are the cornerstone elements of shaping market dynamics. Price, price reflects the value assigned to goods or services determined by supply and demand forces. And why this is important for us to understand? So real estate manager must grasp the dynamics of price, supply and demand to navigate market trends effectively. Understanding these elements enable managers to make informed decisions regarding property acquisition, pricing strategies and portfolio management. Now, we just took example of property acquisition, pricing strategies. Now, pricing, um, uh, uh, let's come to pricing strategies first. So, if we understand supply and demand uh, in the market, we understand that its impact on the pricing of real estate. 
Now, when we understand that economy is going through uh, difficult situations, difficult times, uh, the rent, the, uh, the expected rent for a particular property may not be that high. So, we will have to adjust our requirements. Uh, and if we are looking for a property, we may similarly look at uh, such discounted times when we get properties for discount. So, uh, the, this can become opportunity also if we understand economics, we can understand that how the, uh, um, the, this, uh, this, uh, this good times and bad times are going. And if we have uh, certain aspects of understanding relating to economics and uh, we, can, um, we can basically analyze uh, the, this on a very simple level then also we can make these informed decisions. So, these the informed decisions like for example, we just discussed about pricing. So, pricing of property, then um, regarding property acquisition which is very much connected to it that is if we want to acquire a property. So, acquisition that is uh, that can be very fruitful when there are you know times where people may be more obliged to uh, negotiate for the rent or the, the cost of that property. So, that is there and then uh, portfolio management. So, we have understood that property uh, real estate becomes a very much uh, part of any investment portfolio where we have stocks, where we have bonds. So, when we are adding real estate to that, so if we get real estate at good prices, then uh, the advantage uh, or the returns which we can get uh, out of it for our portfolio can be very good. So, we have to understand this. So, that is your marketplace. Then we come to rental space and employment levels. So, um, understanding the relationship between rental space and employment level is crucial in the realm of real estate. Now, here is why. Supply and demand dynamics. So, rental space like any commodity is influenced by the forces of supply and demand. So, when demand for rental space is, is high relative to supply, it typically lead to increased rents and property values, impact of strong demand. A strong demand for rental space indicates a vibrant economy and business activity. This increased demand often results in landlords being able to command higher rents and see appreciation in property values. This is something which we have been discussing and building on that. So, we have employment level influence. So, employment levels play a significant role in determining the need for commercial real estate space. Growing businesses require more office, retail and industrial space to accommodate their operations and workforce. Conversely, economic downturn or job losses can lead to decreased demand for commercial spaces and potentially lower rents. And this is very much uh, a reality that when we are saying that commercial real estate, if we are looking at boom and bust situations in economy, in, um, uh, in overall economy, then that may impact commercial real estate. And if commercial real estate is impacted, we cannot say there is a higher possibility that the real residential real estate is also getting impacted. The shopping centers are also getting impacted. So, the, uh, the impact will be visible in different sectors. In some, it will be higher, in some, it will be lower. But the impact in different types of real estate will be felt. So, in summary, the relationship between rental space and employment level is symbiotic. Strong demand for rental space is often indicated of a healthy economy, driving up rents and property value. And we know that a big part of the demand, we have also understood earlier, that because of this rush of um, um, or migration of uh, people from rural areas to uh, urban spaces in India is basically uh, also um, uh, leading to higher demand for uh, residential real estate. Uh, also, because uh, the, the job opportunities, the employment market is present in uh, cities. So, uh, so many young, uh, young people are coming uh, to cities and they are looking for jobs. So, the commercial real estate, because a uh, lot of startups, a lot of company activities are taking place. So, all this is linked to the, uh, the overall economy to the population of a particular area. So, there are multiple factors which are impacting the marketplace. So, we should, uh, should uh, very much be aware of these uh, data points which are relating to economy. 
for our understanding of how the marketplace will take place uh, in the future, how it will work. So that is very, very important. Then coming on to impact of interest rate. So interest rate wields significant influence over economic activity, affecting borrowing, saving, and overall economic vitality. So let's delve into the impact of interest rate. So first, let's talk about economic dynamics. So interest rate set by central bank or determined by market forces play a pivotal role in shaping economic behavior. These rates determine the cost of borrowing and the return of saving, influencing the decisions of the businesses and individuals regarding investment, consumption, and savings. Then let's have let's take a scenario of low interest rate. So low interest rate stimulate economic activity by reducing the cost of borrowing. Businesses and individuals are more inclined to borrow for investments such as expanding operations, purchasing real estate or investment in capital projects. Consumers are incentivized to borrow for big ticket purchases like homes and cars, spurring demand in sectors like real estate and automotive. Then there can be situations when we have higher interest rates. So higher rates uh, discourages borrowing and incentivize saving. Then businesses may postpone expansion plan or investments due to higher cost of borrowings, leading to decreased capital expenditure and economic growth. Consumers tend to save more and spend less on credit sensitive goods and services, such as homes and durable goods, which can dampen demand in certain sectors of the economy. Impact on investments. So there will be certainly some impacts on the investments also. So interest rate also influence investment decisions in financial markets, commodities, or uh, real estate in search of higher returns. Higher interest rate, on the other hand, may lead to shift towards fixed income investment as they offer relatively higher yield compared to uh, riskier assets during period of economic uncertainty. So in one of the riskier assets will be your real estate. So basically, we can understand that with the fluctuation of interest rate, when interest rate is low, when interest rate is high. So when interest rate is low, it is easier for uh, people to go for riskier assets, such as buying of uh, a home, buying of uh, certain uh, goods which they require. And when it is uh, uh, higher, then in that case, it becomes uh, uh, difficult for them to do the same process which they have been doing, then they, they might go for savings because also they are getting higher interest rate in by putting their money in fixed deposits, by, by putting their money in saving accounts. So uh, the economy will have such an, certain impacts due to uh, change in interest rate. So sir, sometimes like we will have the um, bust in the market, sometimes we will have boom in the market and it may very much be uh, dependent on the interest rate because that affects the buying power of people. So uh, we have to understand the impact of interest rate. Then moving on, we have business cycles. So understanding the business cycle is integral to navigate the economic landscape. So let's explore its key components. So first, what is this business cycle we have been talking about? So the business cycle represents the fluctuation in economic activity over time, characterized by alternate periods of expansion and contraction. So drivers of economic changes, so several factors drive the fluctuations observed in the business cycle, including shifts in supply and demand dynamics, technological advancements, change in consumer behavior and government policies. So these factors collectively influence the level of economic output, employment and overall prosperity within an economy. Now, what are the stages of business cycle? The business cycle typically comprises of four main stages. We have expansion. This phase is marked by increasing economic activity, rising employment level, growing consumer confidence, and expanding production and consumption. Then we have peak. The peak represents the highest point of the cycle, characterized by maximum economic output and optimism. It often precedes a period of transition. Then we come to contraction. 
also known as recession. So, this stage involves a decline in economic activity. We see a reduced consumer spending during this period then rising unemployment which will be definitely there because we are seeing uh, lowering in the uh, economic activity and then the decreasing businesses investment and another thing which is related to it. Then we have a trough. So, the trough marks the lowest point of the cycle where economic activity reaches its least point. It represents the end of the recessionary phase and typically precedes a period of recovery. Now, following the trough, following the, the worst situation or first point, we have some situations where we are recovering. Now, how will this play out? So, the economy begins to recover with increasing economic activity, declining unemployment rates and renewed consumer and business confidence. This stage sets the, st uh, this stage sets the stage for the next expansionary phase of the cycle and that is how the cycle will continue. Now, these cycles are not a uh, very small period of time. They are uh, gradual cycles that like they, they, uh, they often have a significant period in between them. That is the different phases have different, uh, different amount of time panning out um, maybe months to years. So, it is a gradual uh, process which is taking place in the economy and uh, uh, as observed for a very long time, this is how the market functions and uh, there is no fixed timeline for uh, such type of uh, different uh, zones or uh, different uh, phases of cycle. There can be different time periods for which a particular stage may occur and then there are lot of other decisions taken by the central banks, the governments which impact them and because of these decisions, these uh, the phases of cycle may vary and of overall economy of the world also, in, also is impacting because we are now in a globalized world. So, there are multiple factors which are affecting each other. So, the implication uh, for business and policy of this. So, uh, business must adapt their strategies and operations to the prevailing stage of the business cycle. During periods of expansion, they may focus on growth and investment while during recessions, they may prioritize cost cutting and efficiency measures. Policy maker also play a crucial role in managing the business cycle through monetary and fiscal policies aimed at stabilizing economies, fluctuations and promoting sustainable growth. So, the impact of uh, this on our businesses, on our real estate businesses, that is, that is the function of a commercial building, um, marketing of a residential space, all of that will be impacted. The demand of the real estate is getting impacted. So, of course, our strategy will also change uh, as, per the field, uh, as per the phase in which we are right now of the economy. And, uh, uh, and a real estate manager has to take a call on this, uh, depending on the market conditions, how they will, uh, they will uh, strategize this, how will they, 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 um, uh, how will they maximize the um, uh, profit in um, expansionary stage. How will they uh, safeguard their business during uh, uh, difficult phases? So, this is something which we have to understand. Then moving on, we have uh, recession. That is the first phase of this which we discussed of the different economic phases. Now, what is this? So, now this is not the first stage because there is no first stage as such, but we will be talking about these four stages uh, one by one and we will try to analyze that how uh, one stage is uh, leading to another and uh, then there is another stage which is coming after that. So, it is a cyclical process. So, we will let start with recession first. So, understanding the dynamics of recession is crucial for anticipating and navigating economic downturns. Uh, so, let us have an overview of this. So, we have prosperity phase which is there. Uh, so, prosperity phase of the business cycle is characterized by robust economic growth, increasing demand for goods and services and rising prices and wages. So, during this phase consumers are generally optimistic about the economy leading to higher spending and investment level. So, everything is going good, consumer confidence is high, buyers are buying, there is lot of uh, 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 business activity is taking place in the marketplace, everything is going good. Uh, as, uh, as a real estate manager or somebody 
who is associated with the real estate market, you are feeling very confident that the market is going good, um, the, uh, the office spaces, uh, the rental is going high, the, uh, the rental for our shopping center uh, shops is going high. If we are trying to sell residential units, there is easy availability of buyers in the market, so we can, it's a seller's market and we can easily sell our product. So we are confident. Now this changes. So then uh, there is an impact of excess saving. Prolonged period of prosperity may also lead to an accumulation of excess saving among consumers. While saving is generally prudent, excessive saving can lead to reduced consumer spending. An individual become more cautious about their finances. Reduced consumer spending can have a significant impact on businesses and manufacturers, especially those reliant on consumer demand for their products and services. So, this is happening now. This is impacting your business. So, signs of economic recession. Now, what are the signs which are there? The first signs which will tell you that there is recession. So, tightening credit. So, banks and financial institutions may tighten lending standards, making it more difficult for businesses and individuals to access credit. So, let's assume that we want to sell a residential unit. If housing loan is getting costly, it is impacting your business because you are in the business of selling your residential unit. So, if the buyers of our product, they are facing difficulty in financing their, their home purchase, then it will also impact our business because it is difficult to then find buyers. So that is there. Then reduced construction activity, a slowdown in construction activity, particularly in the real estate sector can indicate weakening demand and in investor confidence. So we will see that there will be a reduced construction activity. Then we will see declining demand, reduced consumer spending. So declining business investments um, and shrinking export demand can all contribute to a contradiction in economic activity. What else will be visible? So these are some of the signs which will be there, which will show you that there are the signs of uh, economic recession, uh, de declining demand, reduced um, construction activity, uh, tightening credit and uh, these signs are, uh, are basically warning signs also that this situation is happening, we have to do something about our business. So what are the consequences of a recession? So economic recessions can have far reaching consequences including rising unemployment rates as a business cut cost and reduce their workforce, declining con consumer confidence and spending leading to further reduction in demand, contraction in business investment and expansion plans, exaggerating the, in the economic slowdown. So it will increase the slowdown. Then decrease in government tax revenues and potential budget deficit as economic activities contract. Then there will be some policy responses. So policy makers often implement various fiscal and monetary measures to mitigate the effect of recession such as lowering interest rate to stimulate borrowings and investment. So after a period of time there may be situation where the, uh, the central bank may decide to lower the interest rate. But it is a complex dynamics which has to be uh, very well understood but right now we can very well say that uh, the, when the situations are such that uh, the, the demand for lowering the interest rate is there and uh, uh, the, all the signs are there then the central bank will take that action. Then um, uh, implementing fiscal stimulus packages to boost consumer and business spending. So certain um, um, uh, fiscal stimuluses which can also be done by the government and uh, the, uh, the central banks. In case of India that will be RBI. So providing support to affected industries and individuals through unemployment benefit and social welfare program. Another action which will depend on the government. That is they may provide certain um, tax measures, certain, certain other initiatives for the safeguarding of industries in these difficult times because there can be a lot of stress on industries and real estate is also an industry which is uh, getting impacted by this. So in summary, while the prosperity phase of the business cycle bring economic growth and prosperity, it is essential to remain vigilant for the signs of the recession. Understanding these signs and implementing approaches, policy response can highlight can help mitigate the impact of economic downturns. Then moving on, we have what are the economic implications? So recession impacts businesses, consumers and financial institutions. We have just seen that how it is impacting consumers, their buying power is going down, 
how it is impacting the financial institutions, how it is impacting the businesses. So businesses we have seen that, for example, our real estate business, uh, because the buying power of uh, consumer is going down, so our selling abilities is also uh, being challenged. We are facing a difficult time in selling the same residential units which we were easily selling earlier. So this, this is something which is getting impacted. And the financial institutions, which are uh, also uh, uh, which are in, into the uh, borrowing and lending. So they are also there. They are, they are getting impacted because of the, uh, uh, the, the, the changes uh, in the economy. So that is there. So uh, these are the impacts which will be there. Then business may reduce inventory, cut cost, and seek credit to survive. Now, in these difficult times, we often hear that the un unemployment is increasing. There is, uh, there is uh, job cuts. There are other measures for uh, cost cutting. Of course, it is always prudent for organizations to adopt cost cutting measures only which uh, can be for a short term. And uh, they should be safe. They should not compromise on safety and other aspects. But there can be difficult situations like this where the cost cutting will do happen. So we will see that the inventory, the other requirements which are uh, generally uh, in the boom period are very well managed. They face difficult periods during this time and managers have to take very hard decisions about that. And then uh, for surviving of the business because the, the, uh, because the, the, uh, the profit is reduced, the money which is coming inside is less, then in that case they will have to survive on credit. So they will have to borrow money. So that is there. So the difficult times is asking for, uh, is leading to all these situations. Then understanding the business cycle helps policymakers and business to navigate economic fluctuations. So when we know that this can happen, we have to prepare for it. That is why it is crucial to understand all these concepts. Because when we are talking about market dynamics being affected regularly during these phases, if we have understanding of these phases of economy, we can plan for it. So that is there. Then moving on to impact of business failure. So we have seen that uh, rising manufacturing cost may lead to banks uh, raising interest rates and uh, refusing loans. Um, that can be there, difficult times. Lending will also be not be that easy. Banks will also decide uh, whom, should, whom they should lend. So they will only pick the ones they think they, the industries, the businesses which can survive these difficult times. So that will be there. Then business failures can have a domino effect, affecting uh, uh, other businesses and financial institutions. So one business failure can lead to the failure of other organization, other businesses. So everything is connected to each other. Now how is that? So if, uh, so for example, there is a company, they are into uh, selling of uh, commercial, uh, they are into lend, uh, they are into the leasing of commercial spaces. Now, uh, uh, when there is a recession, recession, and uh, the the biggest uh, uh, the uh, the consumer of uh, uh, or biggest uh, lease uh, the the person the companies which are leasing from them the biggest uh, clients of that particular company they are shutting down. Say for example, um, the class A um, type of uh, office spaces in India if uh, IT industry is impacted, then it will of course impact uh, the developers who are uh, into building of uh, class A offices. So that is associated with each other. Then subprime mortgage lending crisis in 2000 and 2009 resulted from faulty banking practices contributing to the Great Recession. And in the first class, we briefly looked upon, uh, upon this particular point that uh, the Great Recession which happened, uh, uh, the, the, the GFC, Great financial crisis of 2008-2009, it was because of this subprime mortgage lending crisis, something which was associated with real estate in USA. And then because of that, it impacted the whole world. The economy of the whole world was impacted. So you can understand that it started from one place and then it, uh, the, the effects of that, the reverberations of that were felt in the whole world. So uh, the, the things are connected. It's a globalized world. Then moving on to economic phase of depression. So we are talking about a period which is uh, a depression uh, which, is signify, uh, which, is, uh, which is signified by a prolonged and severe downturn in economic activity, characterized by widespread uh, reduction in business activity, employment and overall economic output. So unlike recessions which are 
relatively short lived and less severe depressions entails more profound and enduring economic contractions now what will be the impact of this so impact on employment and wages so during a depression employment levels plummet as business scale back operations lay off workers or shutter entirely uh, to due to dis diminished consumer demand and financial instability wages also experience a downward pressure as businesses seek to reduce cost and maintain viability in challenging economic environment job losses and wage cuts contribute to declining household income and purchasing power further increasing this economic hardship then declining consumer demand the hallmark of a depression is a sharp decline in consumer demand driven by factors such as job losses wage reductions and heightened uncertainty about the future as a household curtail discretionary spending and prioritizing essential expenses demand for goods and service across various sectors contract and increasing the economic contraction and reinforcing negative feedback loop so the consumer demand is also declining business survival strategies in this difficult times what will be the survival strategies so in response to deteriorating economic conditions surviving business um, uh, businesses implement strategies aimed at weathering the downturn and preserving financial stability so these strategies often involve aggressive cost cutting measures include reducing inventories streamlining operations renegotiating contracts and minimizing discretionary spending by tightening their belts and optimizing resource allocation business aim to enhance their resilience and increase the likelihood of survival amid challenging economic circumstances and government intervention and policy response will definitely then will be there so government typically respond to depressions with fiscal and monetary policy measures designed to stimulate economic activity restore confidence so all this will be there central bank may implement monetary policy such as lowering interest rate quantitative easing providing liquidity support in financial institutions and there will be these actions which will take place during these very very tough times of depression when these type of situations occur these type of stages occur in economy it's very difficult for businesses to survive a real estate business is also one of them very very difficult phase to survive and uh, the the companies which have lower loans on them which have uh, taken a low level of borrowing and they can survive much better so if you plan according to the economic cycles uh, you can perform well in comparison to other um, other companies because um, during boom period it is easy but when it comes to such type of economic stages it becomes very difficult it becomes even difficult for survive to for our survival of the companies so this is very important to understand then moving on to recovery so uh, after this difficult period there will be a period of recovery now this will be marked by declining business cost and increased demand for capital equipment now because you are gradually coming out of this the speed will be slow the speed will be slow of recovery but it will it will be associated with declining business cost you will have lower interest uh, rate so you can borrow borrow at lower cost and there will be uh, because if you are borrowing you can then uh, afford to have certain equipments which otherwise you were not able to lease or you were not able to rent you can now do that so that is there if you can you want to hire more people you can do that so slowly and gradually the economy will start recovering during this phase then employment and wage eventually will increase initially it will take time first the hiring will increase some level of hiring increase after a prolonged depression then there will be when the more and more companies are improving the more and more people will be required and so the overall uh, employment market will improve so eventually employment wages will also increase stimulating consumer spending so the consumers the employees are also com consumers of some other companies products so everything is interconnected to so consumer demand will also increase so gradually we are seeing a recovery in the uh, the economy now um, this uh, there was Uh, a stage but in the 1929 we have discussed that the, the great recession was a very difficult period it also saw a jobless recovery with slow employment growth but from that period on central banks governments have learnt a lot of lessons and now we see a much more improved stages like the recovery take place at a 
uh, like after GFC, we have seen that this, uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the recovery phase was not that prolonged. It was, um, it, there were a lot of learnings by the central banks, the government, and so we have, the governments also have pruned their decision making as per what they have learned in uh, past. But it is always better to be prepared for such difficult times as a real estate manager. Then prosperity, where we have the boom period, where everything we know is going good, the market is performing well, there is huge demand, a lot of um, jobs available in the market, easier to take debt and uh, to manage your company. A very well uh, uh, period for businesses to operate. Real estate, of course, is definitely impacted and uh, they will also be performing well during this period. But irrational decision during this period can cost in other phases that we have just understood. So whatever we plan, whatever we are doing, we should also do it in accordance with what can happen in future. We should understand the economy and if we are planning well during this phase, we will face less hardship during those difficult times. So uh, business expansion will take place during this period, new construction, high wage contribution to economic growth, prosperity will tend to feed on its momentum but is eventually checked by rising prices, wages and interest rate. And that we should be aware of that this can happen. And because of that, we should plan for the future stages. Then we move on to real estate market dynamics. Now, in this, we have seen the different business cycles. Now, now let's talk about real estate market dynamics. So, so the, the real estate market exhibit varying degree of sensitivity to economy, uh, to, uh, to economic activities uh, with slower and stronger responses. Uh, we have seen happening uh, of, of what was happening in the business cycles. So uh, when we are talking about real estate market dynamics, we should understand that uh, real estate is uh, behaving in accordance with the economy. So real estate market reacts to economic cycles with slower and stronger responses. Rents, interest rate, wages may lag behind changes in general prices, impacting real estate profits and losses. Economic downturn in the real estate market can lead to distressed properties and credit crunch, promoting eventually recovery. So we have been discussing this that how this uh, boom and bust period of economy will also impact real estate market. We have seen that how uh, the consumer demand, in our case the demand for uh, residential spaces, for commercial spaces will be impacted. So the impact of uh, the, the business cycle will also be felt by the real estate market. Then uh, the impact of this on the uh, industry and population changes. So changes in industrial activity such as the declining of manufacturing sectors in specific regions can have significant ramifications for real estate market. As factories, shutter and uh, industrial facilities become obsolete. Vacant properties may proliferate, uh, exerting downward pressure on property values and rents in affected areas. This is during the difficult times we are talking about. So industrial restructuring and technological advancement may necessitate the rep repurposing or adaptive reuse of existing industrial sites, presenting both challenges and opportunities for real estate developers and investors. Redevelopment initiative aimed at revitalizing underutilized industry spaces can breathe new life into communities. So that is there. Then population dynamics. So we have touched upon this. Population growth is a key driver of demand for real estate, influencing the need for housing, commercial space, and infrastructure development. Conversely, population decline or stagnation can dampen demand for real estate, le leading to decreased property values. In world, we can see both the examples. In like, for example, the rising population. We can talk about Asian countries, where we are seeing uh, the, uh, the, the rise in population. Specifically, we talk about India. We can clearly see that there is a rise in population and we can see that that is spurring the demand. The demand is increasing. But there are certain countries where we are seeing lowering of population and they are getting, and they, the, the demand is getting impacted by, by the lowering of population. So you can very well understand that uh, which will be applied to which. Then furthering aging population. So in some countries you will see that the population is aging. aging. The, the median age of population is moving towards the older uh, population um, because of the lower birth rate. And India, you will see that we have much more younger population. So that will also impact the dynamics of real estate because uh, young people, they are starting with new families. They want 
uh, newer homes. So the demand of real estate will be higher for such low uh, age population. So that is there. So that example will be applied. Then we will move on to supply and demand in real estate. So real estate values are influenced by balance between supply and demand. We have seen that how uh, economic impact, impact is impacting the real estate, how economy is impacting the buying and supply of uh, uh, the market. And we know that if the buying power is there, uh, then the demand um, uh, uh, is there. And when the demand is there, we uh, as uh, real estate developers, real estate companies will try to facilitate that. We will pro try to uh, bring in more and more such units because we know that it can be sold out, there is a demand. So the supply and demand in real estate is very much relating to what is happening in overall economy. So oversupply leads to declining values and favor renters. So when we have a lot of supply of such type of residential spaces or commercial spaces because there is a plenty of them. So that will become a buyer's market. So buyer will be more uh, uh, strong in the negotiation. But if that in converse is the stage, then in that case, the, uh, the, that is a supplier's market and that is the, uh, the market of uh, real estate developers, companies, and then they will be having the upper hand in the negotiation. So it is basically uh, a situation which can be there. Then real estate investment, which carries risk due to fluctuation in supply and demand, making market less predictable. So predictability is a very big issue. We have been talking about the decision making process uh, depending on what is taking place in economy, but we should remember that uh, predicting these, uh, that is the stages of cycle. We have seen that uh, there is a stage of depression, there is a stage of recovery, there is a st stage of um, um, recession. There are, there are different stages of uh, economy and they can be for a very prolonged period of time. So the, uh, the, the, uh, the, um, uh, the predictability is not that easy. So, but there are uh, prudent uh, financial measures which uh, real estate managers can take and they can then safeguard uh, their companies from difficult times that we have been discussing. So understanding of supply and demand in real estate is very crucial. Then we have government influence on real estate. So we have discussed this earlier that government effect uh, real estate transaction. There are um, different methods by via which we government is impacting the real estate market through taxation that is uh, by providing certain uh, rebates certain incentives for buying uh, 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 or owning real estate uh, residential real estate real estate then certain zoning ordinances like SEZ so um, creating such spaces which are friendly for in industry then regulations of financial transactions so, so tra transaction between two parties for real, real estate is very much regulated we have stamp duty we have different type of taxes which are there so this is there then uh, government regulations so uh, government re regulations impact mortgage lending now mortgage lending that is your um, when we are talking about uh, the interest rate we are talking about the mortgages and, uh, they are also influenced by the government action or they are also influenced by the central banks so that is there then uh, housing program. So there will be also situations where the uh, private uh, companies may be competing with government in certain certain situations when we are talking about affordable housing. So affording uh, affordable housing programs are launched by government. They um, want uh, um, people with uh, lesser economic means to uh, also have access to housing. So government um, have certain initiatives regarding that. So that is also something which is there in the market, which cannot be ignored by private participants. And uh, this all is impacting uh, buyers purchasing power and investment decision. So overall government is a very crucial stakeholder in overall business of uh, real estate and it cannot uh, be uh, understated. It, it is very important. Then impact of uh, government programs on real estate. Now what uh, programs we are talking about here? So um, we are talking about uh, um, uh, uh, like programs like Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana, which is an initiative to promote affordable housing aimed to address the country's housing shortage and enhance home ownership opportunities for low income households. The, these programs offer subsidies, tax incentives and favorable financial terms to facilitate housing affordability and stimulating housing demands. So government subsidy programs such as these uh, include housing subsidies, favorable mortgage terms, 
uh, wield significant influence over real estate dynamics. These programs aim to enhance affordability and accessibility to housing, particularly for low or and moderate income individuals and families by providing financial assistance or incentivize favorable financing term. Such programs can stimulate demand for home ownership, thereby bolstering property values and fostering investment activities within the housing market. So by critically examining, examining the um, impact of government program on the real estate market, stakeholders can better understand the opportunities and challenges inherent in navigating regulatory environment and leverage government initiative to support their investment strategies and objectives. So that is there. So the impact of government programs, in the, the presence of the government is felt by the real estate market. So uh, that is an important factor to understand when we are talking about real estate market dynamics, the economy, that there is a crucial role played by the government. A lot of policies, a lot of initiatives by the government is uh, challenging market dynamics. It is altering the dy dy market dynamics. And it may vary from country to country. In some countries, you will see that there is very uh, uh, less uh, government intervention in market. In some countries, you will see there is more intervention. But definitely, government presence in real estate is there, and we cannot ignore that. Then, moving on to environmental regulations and real estate. So, environmental regulations established by various level of government impose stringent standards that directly affect real estate development and management practices. These regulations aim to safeguard environmental resources, mitigate pollution, and ensure public health and safety. Compliance with environmental regulation is imperative for real estate developers and property managers as a failure to adhere to these standards can result in legal liabilities, fines, and reputational damage from conducting environmental assessments implementing remedial measures, stakeholders must navigate a complex regulatory landscape to meet environmental compliance requirements. Now, this is very important to understand here that certain situations, certain areas are no-go for real estate development. In some places, we, there are coastal uh, zones which uh, uh, have certain specific uh, stringent guidelines regarding development of real estate. So, whether it is in Mumbai or in certain parts of Kerala, we have seen that projects uh, are facing a um, lot of government actions, policy makers' actions on, um, uh, on, uh, on, the, uh, uh, on the legality of those uh, projects. So, um, uh, it's always better, it is always prudent to, uh, to understand economic regulations and follow them. Then, moving on to real estate cycle and economic factor. So, real estate market operates in cycles, we have seen, influenced by economic factors such as interest rate, employment and infl inflation. Overbuilding during periods of prosperity leads to declining demand and occupancy followed by stabilization and development phases. Economic conditions, globalizations and institutional investment play a significant role in real estate cycles, impacting property values and market dynamics. So, we have understood that how these economic factors are impacting real estate cycles and we should, un uh, uh, we should uh, understand how they play for the better functioning of our companies. Then let's summarize what we have done today. So we understood what are the basic economic uh, concepts, um, what are the different boom and bust phases of economy, how they are impacting each other, how they are impacting companies, they are, how they are impacting the buyers, the purchasers, the consumers in the economy, and how it is also impacting the institutions. So there are uh, these lessons we have learned regarding the economy. We have also understood how this economic impact is uh, being felt by the real estate industry the dynamics of real estate market, how it is impacting that, how the demand and supply of real estate is getting impacted, how they are connected to each other. So we have understood this. We have also understood that what are the environment uh, regulations uh, and how they are impacting real estate market. So there are uh, these, um, um, uh, these uh, factors relating to economy whether it is government, whether it is environment, whether it is uh, the boom and bust phases which are very much there and we cannot ignore them. We have to plan for them. As a real estate manager, it is important to understand these concepts because we can then plan for our business and we can then safeguard our business during difficult times and uh, have more return during prosperous times. So 
uh, I will conclude uh, this particular session. Thank you.